This is part 10. So before I keep going with the repair, I just wanted to kind of give an update on my staging area in the back of the car. Got all the parts that are, you know, sensitive to getting wet and I don't want them to get ruined. Just chilling in here. Got the fuel rail, the alternator, the accessory bracket. Got the lower intake manifold, a few other parts, the plenum. Pretty soon, this is gonna start getting emptied as I start putting these parts back on. So before I put the timing belt cover back on, I just kinda wanna go through and make sure all the bolts can thread easily. So with my M6 thread tap, I'm just gonna go in there and just run it through. I already ran it through, but uh, I didn't press record on accident. What that'll do is clean out the threads. It's always a good idea to chase the threads. That's what they call this, chasing the threads so that you don't get any uh, stripped bolts. Another thing I'm doing is taking these dirty bolts and with my wire brush, just cleaning out the threads. Now that I've got all these bolts for the timing belt covers cleaned up, I'm gonna just put the timing belt covers on. This is the right side. Now I'm on the left side of the engine. I'm gonna fit this timing belt cover on. I'm just gonna torque down the M6 bolts. I'll torque those to about 10 newton meters. Before I put this uh, front ti uh, timing belt cover on, I'm gonna take out the crankshaft position sensor and change it with a new one. Now I'm going to drop the new sensor in there. This crankshaft position sensor bolts, they get eight and a half Newton meters. Now I'm gonna take the lower timing belt cover, put it down here. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna install is the accessory mount bracket, which goes right here. 
Uh, two things I want to make sure of first is that I reclip in my crankshaft position sensor cable into the lower timing belt cover right here. And then I want to pull it away because it actually goes in front of the accessory mount bracket. So I just have it draped right here. So then I can fit the accessory mount bracket right here. So I'm just going to take my accessory mount bracket, drop it in. kind of heavy so I've got it kind of in place I'm gonna try and thread in this larger diameter bolt down here I hold it in place In the manual it says you have to take off the AC compressor and the power steering pump over here. But luckily I was able to get this bracket off without doing that. It is possible, it just takes a little finagling with. So that saved me a bunch of time. So I've got my little template here so that I know where the bolts go. So I'm gonna tighten these M10 bolts for the um, accessory mount bracket to 44 Newton meters. Now I'm going to tighten this last, I believe it's an M12 bolt, to 70 newton meters. Now that I've got the accessory mount bracket on, I'm going to take my wire for my crankshaft position sensor, and I'm just going to refit it through these cable ties on the accessory mount bracket. So now that the timing belt is all squared away, I'm going to install the spark plugs. And I purposely waited to install the spark plugs because once the spark plugs are in, the engine is all sealed up and in order to test the timing I have to turn the crank and when the engine is all sealed up it's a lot harder to turn the crank because I have to push past the compressive force inside the piston. Before you install your spark plugs you want to check this gap right here. Sometimes they don't come from the factory with the right gap and then if it doesn't have the right gap, you'll just bend this tab until you get the right gap between here. So I've got my spark plug socket here. I'm just gonna take my spark plug and insert it down in there. I'm gonna go to my first well. Screw it in. And then I'll do that for all six. Oh my gosh, I'm about to do a spark plug. Just go straight down. Yeah, straight down. 
And you want to feel to make sure it's not like binding, that it's threading smoothly. Yeah. And then pull it out. Yeah, once it once you can't turn it anymore, just pull it out. So I've got all my spark plugs in their holes hand tight. Now I'm just gonna go down. And I've got my torque wrench set to 25 Newton meters. And last one. The next thing I'm going to put in are the spark plug cables and they just fit on, I believe it like this, they fit on over the spark plug end. This is what the spark plug wire looks like. And they just fit in the spark plug well. Okay, yeah, and then they also have different length cables. So I'm going to probably put the longer the ones with longer cables at the back because the ignition coils are going to be up here somewhere so they have to run all the way up and around. Also one thing you want to do before installing your spark plug wires is if you have uh, silicone dielectric grease you want to take a q-tip and just swab the inside of this boot and make sure not to get it on the, the metal electrical connector. So what I'm doing is just taking a little bit of my grease and just swabbing it in there in a very thin layer, you don't need a lot. With the spark plug wires all installed, now I'm just gonna put blue tape on them and mark which cylinder each one is going to. So this one's number one. This one's number two. Or sorry, this is three. And this one is five. And this is number two. Four. And six. That concludes this part of the series. Don't forget to check the description for more information, and I'll see you in the next part.